پادکست. Welcome to AI Summit in Sarajevo, Kiss the Future. Today, your channel, BAMCAST, is going to be speaking with the dear guests in the National Theatre of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we have uh, some different studio uh, rather than, than uh, usual. And it's my great pleasure to uh, present my one of my first guests, Mr. Mirza Avdagic, from the uh, Asma Capital Investments Company, uh, an investment manager with uh, over a decade of experience in investments. Mirza, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be yeah. back to Sarajevo. Welcome to Sarajevo. I'm really happy that we have opportunity to talk. Uh, and I'm going to immediately uh, jump to the hottest uh, question. Where is the AI in the finance and investment? Thank you so <laughs> much. Uh, that's, that's a very good question, right? Yeah. Uh, I think there is two ways that we can differentiate investments in the AI. There's you know, the investments that the tech companies are doing at the moment, and this is what all the summit is about, is about investing in the tech and you know, advancing the models and understanding the use cases for it. And then there's the second part where we're talking more about traditional industries, traditional enterprises, companies, you know, everyday businesses, which is millions of them around the world, which are actually just learning about the AI. Uh, but because the tech companies are not even sure about the, all the uses, there will be, you know, the need to be a transfer of knowledge from the IT companies to the traditional businesses. Mm -hmm. And look, I mean, we invest in traditional businesses. So when we look from the, you know, from the perspective of the traditional businesses, everything at the moment is experimental stages. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we try, uh, we can see market leaders kind of testing it, adopting it, uh, but it's all at the kind of beginning of the journey. Uh, uh, the, the, the market leaders, of course, to be able to stay a market leader, uh, to be able to stay in the competition, because AI could give you this advantage, this, you know, one cent to have it over someone else. Uh, and uh, overall, at least by in the Middle East, in the traditional industry sector, we see that the, only the market leaders are adopting it, and everyone else is actually looking to see how that would play out. So that's how, you know, from the investment side, how we look into it. <clears throat> and I want to I wanna ask you a question, uh, whether uh, the companies uh, such as yourself and the whole industry can, in fact, afford themselves to experiment. Because you mentioned that it's ex experimenting currently in the moment. Yes. So uh, are these more traditional kind of industries, uh, can they afford to themselves to experiment a lot with AI or the industry is rather itself like looking to the other guys, what's are going to do to, to copy yeah. them and stuff. So, I mean, <coughs> uh, you know, the good thing about the AI, I think the, the whole thing about the AI, it's, it's actually cheap to implement. If you look at the large scale companies with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, which companies that we are working with, implementing an AI, experimenting with it, it actually doesn't cost you much. So you have these companies uh, that have decades of data which like a gold mine and which in the past they couldn't do anything with it because it, the use cases of it trying to uh, develop something, it was impossible because mm -hmm. there was no tool to analyze the data. Today, the AI has given you this possibility to analyze a new possibility which was not available before. So, and to utilize that data, actually it's quite cheap, you know, adopting the AI techniques because thanks to all these great AI companies and great competition, actually to implement the system is not that hard uh, because all the systems that which are created to kind of tailor made it for, make it for one company, uh, you don't have to have a specific system because it's one system and you just kind of just shift it in different directions. Uh, so we see our investing companies are actually exploring this. And uh, obviously the hope is that you'll be able to kind of uh, automatize some of the uh, yeah. tasks. Second thing is save energy, uh, create efficiency synergies, which mm -hmm. kind of creates costs and you become more competitive than, than your you know, mm -hmm. other players in the market. So that's why I'm saying the, the market leaders are adopting it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, everyone else is looking to see if that's gonna actually work. Mm -hmm. But the great, the beauty of AI is actually you don't have to run as fast as, you know, as everyone else in the IT sector is running because the impact, it will be marginal. Mm -hmm. But that margin in the competition sense will be great. Mm -hmm. So, but also to, to catch up with 
the competition is not going to take too much mm-hmm. time if you, because everyone has this data. As long as you have recorded your uh, operating data, production yeah. data, you can always just get someone like you know some of these IT companies to come consult you and tell you how you can actually use that. Yeah. So I, that's how we see it at the moment. I think that we are living in uh, amazing times and that future is rather bright than, uh, than let's say, gray, <clears throat> because uh, from the perspective of Sarajevo, uh, the Adriatic, uh, the, the, the whole market, where um, you, you can say that we were always late for something, but I believe that AI brings us the opportunity all around the world for a fresh start for, for everybody. So everybody is learning. The guy in Austria, the guy That's in right. Bahrain, the guy in Sarajevo. That's right. They are all in, on, the, on the same start point. And uh, we have uh, the opportunity to be among the first ones to monetize it, in fact. That's right. Uh, and uh, one maybe of the last questions, uh, which I might uh, wanted to ask first, is to, to speak a bit more about ASMA as a company itself. Uh, just in order to, to give to the listeners sure. uh, the, the perspective of uh, why you are here, what the company is doing, yeah. and uh, to see how can we connect Bahrain and Bosnia. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Asma Capital is a fund manager. It's a private equity company. It mm-hmm. manages IDB Infrastructure Fund 2. Uh, it's a $1 billion fund. Uh, we invest in traditional industries like mm-hmm. power, water, utilities, uh, mm-hmm. social infrastructure like healthcare, uh, mm-hmm. schools, hospitals, uh, airports, ports. Uh, so it's, in a sense, very, very traditional core plus infrastructure uh, investments. Uh, so my you know, approach, I guess our approach to the AI is quite different from the rest of the summit here because everyone here is in the IT sector and mm-hmm. they need to be there because if they're not there, they're, they're late they're or they're done. not going to be relevant. But from our perspective is we have more time. Mm-hmm. And... Large utilities, as I said, you know, unless you're competing for new projects, which is very important that you have, you know, competitive advantage is something that that's hard to attain, and AI is a game changer in that. Uh, uh, so, you know, from Asma's perspective, obviously we encourage our industry companies to look into it, and we see through like through the board that actually, you know, boards are really focusing on mm-hmm. trying to create these advantages, competitive advantages, mm-hmm. and they're encouraging the management to actually explore the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we like to you know, be in a position that we think that we always invest in market leaders uh, and try to keep them there. So that, 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 that's the whole idea about it. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, from, from, you know, from our perspective, uh, it, it's, it's, we have this, all our companies have this data and we want to utilize the data. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we- It's gold. It's gold, it's gold, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a matter of time. And mm-hmm. the use cases are, you know, being just, you know, brought up, it's at the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. No one quite really understands it, but you know, mm-hmm. you want to be there. I just interesting fact in, you know, uh, I just read it in the FT the other day, uh, more than 50% of Fortune 500 companies have outlined AI as the business mm-hmm. risk. Uh, not just because, you know, they're fearing of the competition using, you know, AI. It's about even if they are implementing AI in the right way. So it's, it's, a, it's a very, very exciting, you know, topic yeah. at the moment. Yeah, and uh, a lot of big corporations in the IT uh, have, in fact, strictly forbidden to their workers, and these are hundreds of thousands of people, who have, the, have it forbidden to use tools such as ChatGPT uh, and all the others, why? Well, because uh, if you give it, the, if you take their data, they, they also g- take your ones. And um, uh, matter of fact, uh, I see uh, AI as an opportunity for the smaller companies. Why? Because uh, a startup can always uh, fight more quickly, it doesn't have the yeah. procedures, doesn't have big compliance teams, doesn't have too many levels of the approvals. And I believe that uh, the startups and the smaller companies, they are going to be the ones who will override the big corporations, which cannot adapt to the speed that is going. You, you, you may be correct there. As, as I earlier said, is yeah. the, the beauty of AI, it's, it's cheap to implement. So yeah. you don't have to be a billion dollar corporation to actually yeah. get the system running. It's, if you are even small, yeah. it only costs, you know. Yeah. 50, you know, 50,000, 100,000 yeah. to actually start something mm-hmm. if you have the data, if you know the use case. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But it, we'll see that more and more. You're right. As as more, you know, use cases are being developed and people understand more how to use the AI, yeah. we'll probably see a big disruption in the market. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yes. Yeah. And uh, since you are uh, a domestic guy yeah. from Bosnia, <laughs> so I would like to make a connection between uh, Bahrain and Bosnia. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, how are we going to use this experience to connect the countries, uh, to, to share the experience, to learn something new? Uh, Look, I mean, uh, Bahrain and Bosnia, I guess, uh, there is a connection to be made. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's very hard to say from my perspective right now because mm. it's what we do. We invest in large utilities. We, in the past, try to do some projects mm-hmm. in power in, part, uh, you know, in particular. Mm. Uh, it's a difficult market, competitive market here. Mm. You know, we operate in emerging markets where, the, yeah. you know, returns are a, a bit higher. But obviously, look, with the AI, because what Bahrain is trying to do, trying to be the hub of fintech for the Middle East. Mm-hmm. They're creating the entire like half city just dedicated for that. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, it probably is a competition to, uh, yeah. to Sarajevo, mm-hmm. but I think there could be, uh, especially, you know, there could be a connection made where actually there's a partnership where you can accelerate things. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that's where, you know, if you're looking to make a mm-hmm. partnership or, make a partner or, or uh, mm. work together, I think that's where a connection can be made. Yeah. And I believe so. I believe so that there are lots of opportunities for both countries. That's right. Uh, and let's do it that AI connects them. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Obviously, look, I, I'm not an AI expert. We yeah. work investments. Uh, we see how companies yeah. are approaching the AI, but I think that there's a case to be made for yeah. sure. Well, if we have AI, but we don't have money, then that's a problem. So you're, you're more important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. From the investment side, I guess that's true, right? Uh, uh, you know, our investors are actually one of the largest investors in the world, like the PIF, likes mm-hmm. of PIF, uh, government of Saudi, government of Bahrain, mm-hmm. Brunei. So it's all sovereign money. Uh, and, you know, they, we are the infrastructure, you know, kind of mm-hmm. arm of one of their investments. Uh, but they have dedicated, you know, mil billions of dollars in developing the AI and AI related industries. Uh, it's just approaching the right person is, is yeah. the key here. Yeah. And they know what they're doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They is have that, the money. I don't know yeah. if they know what they're doing. No one yeah. knows what they're doing at the moment, right? <laughs> Everyone is kind of trying to figure it out how they're going to yeah. use it. But yeah. the beauty is, look, you don't need to have a lot of money to develop something. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's the beauty of tech. Yeah. It's so, all about passionate, hard commitment. That's right. That's right. So the money cannot actually innovate. Yeah, it helps innovate, but actually the people who innovate things. Yeah, fully agree. Thanks, Mirza, a lot. Thank you so much for, for yeah. inviting me to speak with you.